Hey y'all, Patrick here with Vetted. Thank you guys so much for joining. As promised from yesterday's video at the end, I mentioned I would be doing this video. Uh, looking at popular theories of why potentially we haven't found aliens. Okay, so Brian Cox, a famous physicist who I'm a huge fan of, uh, is going to take us through um, these different theories. Um, I found a great video on YouTube that we're going to take a look at, and um, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, real quick. That's my other rescue dog, Rocket. Got him from Spain. I used to live in southern Spain in Granada. I used to live in a lot of different parts of Spain. Um, and found him at a castle, La Lambra. Look it up. Really cool, like a 1,500-year-old castle. And uh, found him there. It's just a little, little ball of nothing. And uh, we've been best friends ever since. So, again, support your local rescue shelter. Rescues all the way. Dogs, cats. Had a comment yesterday about... Rescuing rats from Australia. Good job. That's awesome. All, anim all animals need love. So anyway, let's jump in, guys. This is a great video. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I did. A possible answer to the Fermi Paradox the question of why there are no civilizations, is because the Earth is pretty much unique in the Milky Way galaxy in that the climate, the conditions on Earth were stable enough for long enough for life to go from cell to civilization. If you think about it, that's a big ask. Uh, we know that we live in a violent universe. We know there are supernova explosions all over the place. We know that there have been impacts on the Earth, the famous impact that wipes out the large dinosaurs. There's been no impact big enough to break the unbroken chain of life for four billion years. So maybe, maybe it's the case that whilst there are billions of planets which may have liquid water on the surface, may have oceans that can support life, it may be that none of those planets in the Milky Way galaxy have been stable enough for long enough to produce civilizations. So that would be a property of the planet itself, the so-called rare Earth hypothesis. Another explanation for the Fermi paradox might be that civilizations live and die. They rise and then they fall. And because of the sheer timescales involved and the sheer size of the galaxy, no two civilizations ever overlap. I once had the great pleasure of meeting Frank Drake, the Drake Equation, a legend, and he also grows orchids. And I arrived at his house just coincidentally on the day that this rare orchid flowers and it flowers for I think one or two days and then goes away again for the year and then flowers again the next year. And he used it as an analogy. He said, well, maybe civilizations are like that. So maybe civilizations are like rare orchids. And so they flower and die and flower and die. And just because of the sheer timescales involved, none of them ever overlap. And so there could be the wreckage, the, the ashes, the fossils of civilizations out there. But of course, we would have no way of knowing uh, until we explore the galaxy and maybe find the, the ruins of these other civilizations. Who knows? That one's interesting for sure, um, but just this idea of overlap. Well, one, he bases it, not he, but this hypothesis based on time scale, right? That's according to us, right? Meaning billions of years sounds enormous to us, but what if life, what if there are beings that live to be millions of years old or hundreds of millions of years old? So billions is nothing to them, right? So time scale, we only have one reference, I get it. Uh, you know, so I'm just saying, right, that could be off throwing this hypothesis off because the idea of overlap, I mean, the universe is ginormous and I bet we'll find out it's even bigger than we think it is. Right. Um, so that just doesn't seem likely to me. Right. Maybe not nearby civilizations, but the idea of all through there's no overlap. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. That That would be like to me in the ocean, like one wave at a time, you know? Oh, the ocean's so big, it's just one wave at a time. I don't think so. There's waves going all around, right? So anyway, but who am I? I'm an idiot. Another possibility is that it's not a paradox. They are here. 
So there are intelligent civilizations out there and they are present in the solar system. Uh, let's think, for example, what such an intelligence might look like. Well, well, who knows? They could have sent nano machines to our solar system. There could be probes all over the place. But if they're the size of an iPhone, then we'd have no way of detecting them. So it could be that the technology of a sufficiently advanced alien species, a civilization, is so beyond anything we can comprehend or detect that we haven't seen it. And that's certainly uh, entirely possible. To be honest with you, of all the ones we're going to hear today, that one is probably the most likely to me. You know, it's just beyond our understanding of what civilizations can do, right? They get technologically far more advanced than we could ever imagine, right? Far more than we could ever be creative about, about right? Um, if you ever look at like pictures of the future from the past, right? When people try to look at what the future would look like, um, it's off by quite a bit because it always takes in what their current understanding is and they extrapolate that, um, right? And clearly it just doesn't go that way, you know? So yeah, that's interesting though. Another possibility is just that the galaxy is so big. The distances between stars are so great that if you imagine there's another civilization, let's say on the other side of our galaxy, even if they had the most powerful radio transmitters you could imagine, then it may just be that the distances are so great that the signals are diluted, that we can't detect them because they're too weak. But perhaps you can build a spacecraft that can hop a few light years away to the near nearby solar system. But you can't build spacecraft that can traverse a galaxy. I don't know about that. How do we know you can't build a spacecraft that can traverse the galaxy, right? Um, what about, uh, I mean, let's go back 10,000 years. You know what? Let's go back to like 1860s, a couple, not even a couple hundred years ago. And you tell someone, hey, we're going to go up to that moon up there, you know, in a hundred years. I'd be like, what? That's crazy. Impossible, right? Impossible. And look what we did. We did it, right? So I don't know. We don't know what we can do till we do it. That's just the truth. Now, it's possible that there are many civilizations out there, but the advanced civilizations choose to remain hidden. Sometimes called the dark forest hypothesis, the quarantine hypothesis. Let's imagine that civilizations, when they get technologically advanced. Let's just appreciate how wonderful the graphics are in this video, right? The imagery that they're using, by the way, it's just gorgeous also get intellectually and morally advanced. And let's say that they choose, perhaps for good reason, let's say they choose to remain hidden because they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Let's say it's inevitable that if you think about it carefully and you think there are other advanced civilizations out there, then you choose to remain silent. You hide yourself as best you can. Maybe that's a logical thing to do. I find it difficult to believe given human history that that's the way that intelligent civilizations behave we certainly haven't made any attempt to remain hidden so far uh, we broadcast radio signals out to the stars we've launched on our space probes voyager pulsar maps in that case which shows the location of our solar system should any other civilization find it we've tried <laughs> at every opportunity to broadcast our existence. Carl Sagan argued that a sufficiently advanced civilization, a civilization that can build interstellar spacecraft and communicate across interstellar distances, perhaps is wise enough to have overcome those primitive instincts, the instinct to cause trouble, to fight wars, to colonize, to walk over other civilizations. Perhaps it's inevitable that with technological advance ultimately comes wisdom. Maybe it's like Star Trek. Maybe it's the Prime Directive. Animals who happen to look like us still thank the Prime Directives for this planet. 
I don't think we have the right or the wisdom to interfere, however a planet is evolving. Maybe it's morally certain that if you're sufficiently advanced, you decide to take the position that you will never introduce yourself or interfere with another civilization. But it's a hypothesis. That one's interesting um, because what does morally advanced mean, right? Primitive instincts. What does that actually mean? Maybe they're not primitive, right? Does that make sense? Like we still, all the things we did primitively, right? If you want to put it, still exist today in humanity because humanity is not one whole thinking machine, right? Look at all the different cultures and countries and um on earth right as an example right we have billions of people on the planet all thinking quite differently right we're all in our own heads right so this idea that an alien civilization would just think as this one whole um one sounds boring right if that's how you advance um, i just don't see that happening and i don't know what does morally advanced mean right that that just means different things to different people um so I just don't think that we're just all going to think as one species one day, right? That just seems impossible. And again, very boring. Um, so how advanced is that, right? Like we lose our, our sense of identity. So I don't know. I don't see that as being advanced. Um, I see that as regressive. I see that as that's how things used to be, right? Let's think as a, a whole, an empire, right? We're going to have one thinking, one religion, that I, one person in charge looking down, right? Um, so I don't think that, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that one. What do y'all think? There's an idea in this field, I'm trying to explain the Fermi paradox, called the great filter. So let's think about what it would mean for a great filter to lie in our future. That would mean that civilizations do arise in the Milky Way galaxy and get to somewhere like the position that we're at now. So they develop rocketry, they develop nuclear power, nuclear weapons, for example, they industrialize. But then there's a filter in the future that stops them becoming true space-faring civilizations. So stops them becoming multi-planetary species and stops them ultimately traveling between solar systems to begin to colonize a galaxy. So why might that be? Why might there be a filter waiting for us in our not too distant future that's going to stop us from becoming an interplanetary species and ultimately traveling out beyond our solar system? I don't think it's technology. As far as I can see, I don't see anything in, in the laws of nature in principle that would stop us from becoming an interstellar species. It could be that our knowledge, our scientific prowess exceeds our wisdom, exceeds our political skill. It could be that once a civilization develops the means to destroy itself in the form, for example, of nuclear weapons or biological weapons, or maybe uh, some kind of a lack of control of AI, who knows? If you look back through our recent history, there have been several occasions that we know about where we came very close to destroying ourselves, or at least setting us back to the Stone Age. For example, where there could have been nuclear launches and weren't, I'm sure there are many others that we don't know about. There's the challenge of climate change. We're completely incapable of coming together at the moment as a global civilization to address that challenge, that could set our civilization back. So it might just be almost a law of nature. I think my favorite's the other one, so I'll do the other great filter. If I was to guess why we see no evidence of other civilizations out there, the, the so-called great silence, is what astronomers call it, is because there aren't any and there never have been any. The reason I guess that, and I emphasize it's a guess, is biology. So if you look at the history of life on Earth, then we see that life began 3.8 billion years ago, let's say. But then we see for the best part of 3 billion years on this planet that there's nothing more complex than a single cell. And there could be good biological reasons for that. One, 
that springs to mind is the evolution of what's called the eukaryotic cell, which form all multicellular living things on the planet. Those cells, which seem to be prerequisite for complex multicellular life, evolved once on this planet, as far as we can tell, pretty widely accepted. It's called the fateful encounter hypothesis. And so it seems that there is a very unusual evolutionary event at some point that laid the foundations for us. If it typically is the case that it takes four billion years from cell to civilization, then I think there may be very few planets in a typical galaxy which are stable enough for long enough for that process to, to, to proceed. I think there's one civilization in the Milky Way galaxy and there only has ever been one and there might only ever be one, and that's us. Which, by the way, means that we have a tremendous responsibility not to mess this up. That means the Earth is the only island of meaning in a sea of 400 billion suns. And so if we destroy this, we might destroy meaning in a galaxy forever. However, that's a, that's a hypothesis. I will be delighted if it turns out that's not true. And that's not, not just because it removes some responsibility from me and you and everybody else, but also uh, every scientist should be delighted if they are shown to be wrong. Because the moment you're shown to be wrong, it means you've learned something. And that's the way that knowledge progresses. So nobody should be worried about making a guess uh, advancing a hypothesis, an educated guess. And me being wrong, by the way, would constitute a flying saucer landing and some aliens coming out like E.T. and saying hello. So that would be brilliant. <laughs> but uh, it would be doubly brilliant because it would turn out that I'd learned something about the universe, which is that complex civilizations are not as rare as I think they are, or civilizations aren't as rare. So that would be a good thing. So there's a lesson. Um, yeah, that one's interesting. Um... Why would we think we're so special, right? Why would we think, I'll put a link to this video so you can watch it. Um, why would we think we're so special? I just, that, that one is just, I, I'm so curious why scientists lean towards that. Like we're the only, I mean, all we have is, we assume life is so hard to come by because we have one example here on earth, right? But what if it's actually quite easy? What if it progresses quite quicker in other parts of the universe, other galaxies, right? And what if we were created, right? If we were created here, right? Either by aliens, gods, whatever, right? Um, then that would be null, right? So I don't know, just that one just seems the most unlikely, but they find it the most likely. I get it, I get it. Um, I'm not very smart, so, but I don't know. What do y'all think about all these? Very interesting. Tell me in the comments. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow on another great video. I'm going to be rehashing, relooking, relooking, <laughs> looking at, remember the Logan Paul UFO video James Fox talked about and Logan Paul got whatever, all of that, whatever happened, all that, right? So I'm going to be diving deep into that and finding out what happened and maybe what's going to happen with that. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Patrick. As always, every day's a gift. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.